Good afternoon and welcome to Ryersonian TV. My name is Haley Brower and I am joined here today with the first year Master's of Architecture student Kevin Poo. He recently worked as a research assistant for the Ryerson-based architecture project launched, launched this past summer called Augmented Reality in Development Design. And also he participated in the building of an app called the ARC app. He, alongside fellow research assistants and Ryerson architecture professor Vincent Hoy, were recently featured in the Globe and Mail for their innovative design software for the industry of architecture. Thank you so much for joining me here today, Kevin. You're welcome. So, first of all, can you briefly tell us a little bit about the ARC app and the augmented reality and development, development design software, and what does it do? Okay. Uh, first off, in, in relation to the ARC app, it's actually a concept that um, a professor, Hui, uh, came up with. Uh, he really wanted to improve the, um, the interest in architecture within Toronto. So what he came up with is this idea of having a database, uh, much more sophisticated than, I guess, simple Wikipedia, that would be um, documented by architecture students or architects like himself to showcase different architecture locations or nodes or landmarks within the city. So for example, uh, be sitting here, I can open up my uh, iPad as long as I'm connected to the internet. Um, it would be able to use augmented reality to geolocate my location and then be able to tell me about things such as what um, are relevant architecture landmarks nearby such as the engineering building or uh, the architecture building itself down at um, Girard and Gould Street and uh, Church Street sorry and what it's able to do is really quickly show you um, interesting floor plans sections elevations in which is much more informative than the simple Wikipedia uh, read on it and you're able to learn about um, some of the history the design development architects as well as um, interesting facts about what happened to um, these interesting landmarks. So it enables uh, people uh, such as tourists or just architecture fans itself to be able to get a more um, informed knowledge or lesson, architectural lesson on the, uh, the city. And, and how do you feel that this type of technology will further innovate the industry of architecture? Um, this technology, I think it uh, the innovation is, is there in terms of um, informing the public of what we do. I mean, mm -hmm. when you talk about architecture, a lot of people just think we sit in these fancy <laughs> cubicles and draw nice uh, drawings. Oh, no one thinks that. And, uh, <laughs> you know, the, the, the typical um, question is, oh, they refer to us as uh, a Ted Mosby from How I Met Your Mother. <laughs> but through this, you're able to showcase what architecture is about. You're able to showcase some of the important integral drawings uh, that are able to convey different layers of information uh, as well as just get people more informed about um, different types of uh, architecture within the city that they may not have known of. Mm -hmm. and, and you were a student working on these projects which I think is absolutely fantastic but what was maybe one of your most memorable or favorite parts of your experiences while working on both the ARC app and the augmented reality and development design software? Um, I can speak a little bit uh, about augmented reality and design development um, in which it was one of my more fa uh, memorable mm -hmm. moments in which I was able to go into the second year studio with my professor and um, sort of implement and work with the students with this application and essentially uh, a system in the design development and what it does is it removes the mundane process of creating um, physical models in which students are able to use the software, model uh, whatever design that they have in um, 3D space, and then be able to project it onto a real scale, one-to-one -one scale. And so seeing the students be able to visualize their buildings uh, superimposed with something such as uh, the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. restrictions, they're able to see how much are they able to set back, how much are able to protrude to um, the lot line. Seeing the students learn in a different manner than which I was learning from in second year is a really good experience and a um, memorable moment for me. That's fantastic. And I see we also have a couple of blocks here that look a yeah. little bit like a QR code. Yeah. Do you maybe want to give a little bit of uh, information as to what those, do, what those do and how they interact with the software? Um, essentially what it is is the software is able to pick up uh, these QR codes. Obviously, um, if you want to do a one-to-one -one scale, that will be much bigger. But for um, th today's purpose, uh, have it at smaller scale. So what it does is it picks up these patterns based on high contrast. So um, once it picks up this pattern, it's able to apply a grid over it in which the camera or the, the software is able to measure uh, to scale uh, a, um, the, the grid. 
And so it's able to uh, imply and superimpose in sort of the image in real space to see um, your model in space. And so um, at first it started up to be uh, pretty laggy or slow. And uh, we're able to refine it to a point where we're able to show three patterns at once and show three different models at the same time, as well wow. as materiality. Fantastic. And I know this week is Global Entrepreneurship Week. And obviously, you've accomplished so much here at your time at Ryerson. So what I wanted to know is, what experiences will you take working in these projects to further your career as an entrepreneur and as an architect? Um, Working on this project, I was able to um, gain, learn or gain some of the soft skills that's not really taught in uh, the program, such as, uh, for example, today speaking with you, as well as um, the article, as you mentioned earlier, with uh, a journalist from Globe and Mail, uh, practicing uh, how to convey um, ideas and thoughts to different clients, and um, uh, I guess more uh, robust, a simple matter that they can understand, uh, but mainly the ability to um, build up my interpersonal skills to talk to people. Uh, throughout this project with augmented reality and design, we actually collaborated with an integral member, Matthew Campo, who is uh, sort of the, um, the software computer um, design, uh, designer behind this, as well as uh, meeting with uh, potential uh, stakeholders in the future, such as uh, Norm Lee, who has worked on a similar um, technology with augmented reality, but I'm on a mobile platform. Mm -hmm. And we're in sort of initial talks with him in terms of bringing this augmented, rea design, uh, augmented reality and design development into a more uh, mobile platform, such as the iPad, in which mm -hmm. it would run very smoothly and everyone's able to use something like their cell phone rather than carrying around a gigantic laptop. Yeah, exactly. And it seems like you've made quite a few connections now for the industry that you're going to be able to benefit from later on in your career. And lastly, what I have to know is what's going to be next for you, Kevin? Is there anything coming up in the near or maybe far future that we can look forward to? Um, in terms of me personally, I'm just in my first year, of my master's of architecture study. I'm still trying to figure out uh, what I want to do for the future. But in terms of the projects, uh, what I can tell you is that, as I mentioned earlier, we're in um, talks with Norm Lee. Mm -hmm. And something really interesting that he's been doing um, with augmented reality, it's called Peak. And it's the same thing, but at a more robust um, mobile platform in which you're able to um, project onto the same thing into real space, uh, different furnitures. If we take that, uh, and at the geospatial location mm -hmm. for architecture, students can now go anywhere on site and not only take pictures of the site, but be able to bring their models with them, not physically, but virtually, and apply it onto a platform, be able to study and visualize uh, their design. And also, um, in respect to the archite uh, architecture app, uh, we've begun um, talking with the OAA in terms mm -hmm. of uh, organizing possible interviews with relevant architects to talk about sort of their design input and sort of the process and be able to give more to this database and hopefully uh, develop it into a more robust manner that can be uh, spread out to different cities such as uh, New York City or San Francisco, just to name two off the top of my head. You know, this is some really, really fascinating stuff here, Kevin. And I want to thank you so much for joining me here today on Ryersonian TV. And that's all that we have for you today. If you want to see more of this, check out our website at www.ryersonian.ca. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next week.